David Williams. I'm uh, the Vice President of Business Development for UMS, Kedar and Strategy. Thank you so much, David, for giving a precious time for us for ADU. We welcome you here at Dubai Asia 2021. Now, we begin our questions with V150, something that you have come with here on the Dubai Asia show. So, how V150 for Gulf region, the Middle East region, what exactly it is presenting? Very good question. So the V150 is manufactured in Switzerland. To start with, it means we can export it to this region. With the rest of our portfolio, essentially the V200 cannot be exported to this region. It has extraordinary capabilities, up to 5 hours of endurance and can carry up to 40 kilos of payload in two payload bays, making it extremely suitable for any operations in the region. Okay. So uh, how it is going to change the Middle East Navy system? So that's another very good question. We won't revolutionize the Navy system here in the Middle East. However, UMS has a tremendous experience now in integrating um, UAVs with existing navies with the V200s and the NATO contracts that we have been awarded. We will take all of that knowledge and transfer it into the V150, and that makes us actually the best possible partner to integrate the sensor, the, the aircraft and sensors into any naval ship. So it is going to be this, this uh, technology exchange or you are particularly looking for to bring this thing and how it is going to be? I mean, if you can explain me this. It, it always starts as a technology idea, but of course we are being asked and we want to localize content. What does that mean? That means that we will produce the aircraft in country. We will start to assemble it and then we will find out the right supply chain to source as much as possible locally and become a sort of indigenous product that will be dedicated to the Middle East and the GCC countries. So far, what has been your, the response from the region for V150? It has been tremendous. We launched it at UMEX two years ago. COVID, COVID happened, unfortunately, so it did delay a little bit, of course, our expectations. But the response has been great from um, uh, defense customers and, of course, civilian customers as well. So. I think if they cannot wait to see us flying in country. Right. Defense customers, definitely I understand what you have to do. What about civilian customers? How it is going to affect them? How it's going so, to revolutionize them? Very good question. As you say, defense customer, that's the bread and butter of the of the business. So we are we know all of them, they know us. In the civilian sector there are a few hurdles actually. The regulator does not permit this type of aircraft to fly above populated areas. However, the dangerous, dull and dirty works are possible to be done with this aircraft. I will give you an example. If we need to uh, perform surveillance around an offshore field, you don't need to use a helicopter today. You can take off with one of the V-150s, fly for a few hours around the field, monitor the security around it, all of that without putting any lives at risk. But the cost, that will be that of a fraction of the cost of a manned helicopter. Right. When we talk about regions, uh, you recently had a good exposure with the Germans for V150. Now, every region has different challenges, military challenges. How 150, V150 is going to make a place, it's going to make its name for the Middle East region. I, the, we talk about the capabilities here and are you going to customize some things for the specific region? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, first, I would like to bring a correction. The German contract was won with the V200. Oh. And here, we, as I said, for exportability reasons, we are offering the V150. It's all about the capabilities, because we are carrying sensors, and those are the ones that matter for the mission that needs to be performed. So each customer, civilian or for short defense customer, wants some particularities that no one else has. But the carrier, the truck, the platform itself remains the same, of course. So it's how we customize the sensor suite for it that will make it really specific for the customers. And the ones we are talking to in the region here um, believe that the platform is robust enough based on our great experience to fulfill their missions. And we assist them in finding the right sensor suites so that they have the full capability available. And this is something that most OEMs don't do. We invest a lot of time and resources to offer this support to our customers. Right. Finally, at the Bay Asia, what are UMS Kelda's expectations out of the show So we believe uh, that we will secure a launch customer in the GCC for the V150. 
uh, in the year 2022. We have a lot of hopes on the civilian sector as well and discussions that are started. So hopefully within the next 12 months, we should have secured a launch customer for the defense and a launch customer for the civilian sector in the GCC. So, uh, about your relationship with the Middle East region, the Gulf region, would you like to talk more about, let's go back to the history, how it has been till now? Absolutely. So, UMS Kela has been present in the region for almost 10 years. Back in 2012, 2013, we were flying demonstrations uh, at the time, but we were not, I would say, ready. It was in the fixed wing domain, which was not our core expertise. So we decided to recenter our efforts in the rotary wing segment, which is where we really have all the expertise. In the last four years, we have come on a monthly basis, nearly, to the, to the region to promote the products, and that has given a level of trust to the customers that they want to work with us. So it's an ongoing relation and long established. And I hope with this, the relationship enhances. Inshallah. Great. Thank you so much, David, for giving us your time. And uh, we hope the rest of the days are much better and more fruitful for the company. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.